gotta love it. It is fall. It's football season and the top Republican presidential hopefuls ready for some football on the Iowa State campus right before the game against Iowa. Former President Trump, you see they're throwing some footballs, grilling some burgers at a fraternity. What else do you do when you're in Iowa State? And then going inside to rev up the frat brothers at Alpha Gamma Rho. Then a huge crowd chanted USA as he went in Jack Tri Stadium where he signed more autographs before heading into the game. Also inside the stadium parking lot, Vivek Ramaswamy meeting up with tailgating fans. You, Let's go! I appreciate it. <laughs> Ramaswamy rising in recent polling for the GOP primary, including one from Iowa State University out this week. That puts him in fourth place behind Trump, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. I mean, the truth is we're all on the same team. With America First Movement, we're all on one team. The question is, how do we take it further? And I believe I'm going to be best positioned to do it. Governor DeSantis also tailgating out there with the fans in the parking lot telling reporters, quote, we're having a good time. It's quite an atmosphere, probably a little bit more civilized than the Florida Georgia game, he said. Then he went inside for the game and sat in the stands next to Governor Kim Reynolds, who, by the way, has not endorsed any candidate yet in the Republican primary. She is vowing neutrality, but she has frequently appeared alongside the governor. OK, let's talk GOP politics and this race that is heating up. Guy, I'm going to come to you first because you know what I often hear from Trump surrogates is the primary is over. Is it? No, the primary isn't over yet. The voting hasn't started yet. The game is, by the way. Iowa went on the road <laughs> and beat <laughs> Iowa State 20 to 13. So that's a W for the Big Ten Conference there. Uh, but I understand why Trump supporters would try to make the argument that it's over because if you look at virtually all of the polling, he is in a dominant position and someone has maybe a little boomlet here and a little bit of movement there, but the top line is not close. So if this continues to just sort of move along at this pace, then Donald Trump obviously is by far the front runner to win the nomination. But I think it's a little premature to make any declarations just yet. But someone is going to have to make a move in a serious way. There'll have to be consolidation from the non-Trump candidates. There's a few dynamics that could change the race, but look, if you're a betting person, if you're betting on the game, that's one thing. If you're betting on this race, clearly the best bet right now is Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. You know, that's what I wonder, Jimmy, is, is what does a candidate have to do right now to make that breakout moment? I mean, there's not a lot of time left before the primaries kick off. Yep. What do you have to do besides go to the debate? Well, I'm sure Vivek tried to rap during the halftime show. Yeah. I don't know that they let him onto the <laughs> stage. I'm sure he was there with a the mic ready to go. Uh, if anyone wants to be the person who takes on Trump, they have to take on Trump. Everybody's trying to thread this delicate needle right now of, I don't want to alienate his base, but they are all quietly hoping he'll go away. I mean, if they were clearly on the same team as Vivek said, they wouldn't be running against him. They'd be consolidating behind him. OK, so I think there's this delicate balance. But I think today is really reflective of where we are in the primary at this point. Right now, no one's running for president. They're running for class president. They're trying to do popular things. Hey, I'm flipping burgers. I'm throwing footballs. I'm hanging out at the ball game. But if you know anything about how bitter the Iowa-Iowa State rivalry can get, nobody cares that any of these guys were there. They were just another, you know, a couple of guys drinking a beer in the stands. Like, get out of the way. You just made the urinal line longer. That's all it was. But, you know, nice photo op. It is cool to see them. It's like, cool. Have I, beer oh, and... con contrast this yeah. against what Joe Biden is doing right now at four in the afternoon on a Saturday. He's waking up in the middle of his night to pee. Okay, so yeah. yes, this I, looks I better say, on our party. I do think party. he's sleeping actually, wherever, whatever yeah. time it is in India right now. Um, Nicole, I thought it was interesting this week that you know Team Biden Harris announced that Kamala Harris is going to go to all these colleges and universities and try to get the youth vote out. Smart because she's going to a lot of these um, battleground states. Here's the thing, though, like, I don't know that that's going to cut through the age factor that is has become such an issue for Democrats, for this president. At the same time, it's an issue for Republicans, too, because you've got the, the two big um, leaders in this race are either in their 70s or 80s. Well, right. Well, so first of all, you have to go to Iowa because that is something that we've done historically. And from since 2000, I think every single Democratic primary who has gone there and won Iowa, they have become the presidential nominee. Now, we know with President Trump in 2015, he didn't actually win Iowa. Ted Cruz did, but he took second. And that is kind of what pushed him to be, you know, people started taking him seriously. But right now, they're just going through the motions. President Trump doesn't need to be in Iowa doing this right now. It's, it's, it's obviously some posturing. 
But you are absolutely correct that when you look at Iowa voters, they're older and they're male. But the GOP has a problem with the younger female vote. And Kamala Harris is exa doing exactly what they need to do. And she is doing this college tour. I think she's going to 10 different states and they are going around the colleges. Uh, we have they have to talk about the elephant in the room. I'm sorry, but abortion rights. And yep. I know that Republicans don't want to talk about it because it's such a hot topic, but it means something to a lot of Americans. And yes, President Trump's base may be all for a federal ban on abortion, but a lot of Republicans, independents, and certainly Democrats are not. And either the, other than Nikki Haley, no one else is making pragmatic statements uh -huh. on it. I think she, yeah, I think Nikki articulated the most tenable position if you're going to get support from the other side of the aisle. But reading into what you said, they shouldn't be at a football game. They should be at a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> that's where they should be. That's where the young female voters are right that's now. Smart. That's where you hanging out at Iowa, Iowa State. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Get down to the arena. Let me pull up this poll from the uh, state of Iowa. This is a 2024 Iowa caucus preferences first choice. 51% is the leader. That is the former president. And then you go all the way down to 14% and there is the governor. Um, it, it's not shifting. It didn't shift much after this uh, first GOP debate. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens after the second debate, but something's got to happen or we come back to that question of, mm -hmm. What is all this for? Well, Iowa, I think, is a must-win state for Ron DeSantis. Mm -hmm. There are other polls that show it significantly closer. Trump's still up, you know, 20, right, but not up 35 or 40 in the state of Iowa. Uh, and DeSantis, their campaign says we've made inroads. He's visiting all 99 counties. He's got a good ground game there. There's a story just this weekend in Politico talking about some Trump orbit folks getting worried about their own ground game in the state of Iowa. So if DeSantis has any path, to the nomination, it has to start with not just a respectable showing, but a W in Iowa. He's got a long way to go, and uh, it's a tough road to hoe, but I think they're putting a lot of their eggs in that basket. And I do wonder, polling that comes out in the next, let's say, week or so, is there any bounce for DeSantis coming out of the way he handled the hurricane in his home state? Right. Extremely competently and well. Do voters see that? Do they care? I guess we'll find out. That was a big moment for him. Um, switching back to the Democrats really quickly, it was not a fun week for the president. Um, some bad, bad polling out. But also this. This is a headline from the New York Post. And the headline is, who is the president? An alarming number of Americans don't <laughs> know. And I believe yeah. that that was one of the, the top searches of Google yeah. was, who is the president? Because people yeah. have no idea who it is, uh -huh. which is crazy. But also these these numbers that are coming out uh -huh. indicating that the president not doing well on the economy, obviously age is a factor. All these things are going against him. And yet uh -huh. he is still neck and neck with former President Trump. Why? It's crazy. But the most disturbing part of that study about who is the president is one of the Google searches came from Joe Biden's computer. <laughs> it's like, who's in charge around Jimmy. here? What's going on around here? Well, this is the problem. I mean, when you look at the Democrats, they don't want him running. Obviously, Republicans aren't a big fan. And uh, there's an apathy right now in this election, I think, is what's going on. The Democrats are waiting for something to budge just the way the Republicans are. If this is a Trump-Biden thing, and it does feel inevitable at this point, uh, there is no enthusiasm for that matchup. So the issue they're having at the White House right now is the outside perception is he has to go. The inside perception is he wants to stay. Uh, he probably should split the difference and leave early like he did at the medal ceremony the other day. But I don't know that he's going to. So no one wants Biden to have a second term, not even most Democrats, as polling suggests. But unfortunately, there are people who are just not going to vote for Trump no matter what, and they will vote for any Democratic person that they put up there. So that is why it's important that the GOP actually consolidate. As Vivek said, they're all on the same team. And they have to start talking about some of the issues that matter, not just talking about uh, th th the indictments and things being unfair to President Trump. He really has to get back to talking about the people and not the unfairness to himself as an individual. Well, that's what Guy and I were just talking about before the show started, is it's not just about the primary season, the right, and, and the GOP party and, and who gets that nomination. It is about the general. And I think that's what some of these candidates keep saying is, like, can President Trump win the general? That's the key question. And so we shall see. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.